battle perspective. From Danzig to death, to Dark Throne to Dr. Shrinker. Buckle up, things are about to get heavy. This is the Metal Podcast. Let's rock and roll. And welcome to another episode of the Metal Podcast. And today, I promise we will talk mostly about metal. I'm sorry for the last five episodes. I am AC, joined by the greatest commandant a a president could ever want. DJ, how are you doing? I am. Uh, I'm feeling legendary today, and it's not because of anything I've done, but because of our our legendary guest we have today. But I'm doing well. How are you, sir? I I, I am good. I'm good. Thank you. And we are joined by one of the uh, most recognizable bases and bases of all time mr david ellison how are you doing gentlemen how are you good to chat with you uh, uh, so, thank you for being here thank you for being yeah, here so uh what have, what have you been listening to lately <laughs> overkill exclusively <laughs> that's all i've been listening to for like six weeks <laughs> that's funny we actually just had jason bittner on our show last episode and, yeah, and, yeah. and we failed to mention about you joining the band, at least for the tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just filling in for the tour. You know, look, they're they're dear friends of mine. It's funny, I've played, you know, I, I haven't played with Derek, the guitar player, the other guitar player. But me, it's funny, me and Dave Lintz actually wrote some songs together after a NAMM show 15 years ago, maybe. It was a while ago. And um, he and Joe Camo, who was the singer in Annihilator, for a while uh me dave lynch joe camo and jimmy degrasso we all came out here to phoenix and we wrote a bunch of songs under a band name called atomic 66 and they're great songs in fact i gotta you know dave's been reluctant to put them out i gotta beat on him a little bit here this next month and put her together to put these songs out if we just put them up digitally they're freaking cool man super good so uh so and then of course me and Blitz, you know, we've jammed Metal Legions all the time, and and um, me and Bittner have done clinics and stuff and jammed together. So, um, you know, I'm I'm ex- I, you know I'm, I'm excited about it. You know, it's funny we had Overkill on the Peace Cells tour. Overkill was out with us in 1987. <clears throat> so Blitz has got some funny stories about all kinds of chicanery that was going on back in those days on that tour, but. Uh, um you know so yeah we're we're all brothers from the same neighborhood you know and i always said you know look if there's the big four if you added exodus on the west coast and overkill on the east coast there's your big six right there you know i i can't argue with that <laughs> yeah i mean look i gotta say you know digging into these to these songs you know they've got what 20 records out um i mean consistently they have probably made the best most consistently great albums out of all of us <laughs> and i mean you know and i mean all of us they have really there's not like a dud in the bunch you know what i mean and uh they don't have a risk or a sane anger anywhere in their catalog <laughs> yeah we don't they talk about risk. <laughs> from the, from the path, you know what i mean and i mean so exodus has got good stuff too but i think overkill you know now that i'm really digging into it and really understanding it it's it's uh you know it's um it's just that, you know, and, and Dee amazing, man. I mean, look, I may be David Ellison, but I ain't no Dee Dee Bernie, man. I mean, that guy is, he's a masterful songwriter. His arrangements are killer and, you know, his parts are very clever and cool. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good, it's, it's got my thrash chops up and it's, it's, a, it's an honor to just step in and help him out, you know? Well, I'm sure they're honored as well. That is, yeah. uh, that's yeah uh, again you know we're all, we're all buddies, you know we're all buddies we're brothers you know and look i'm in a position and a you know schedule allows for me to go do it so um you know that's what it is i'm, I'm now the new grinding wheel <laughs> listening right. to listening to some you know it's funny i just saw andy sneep with judas priest in frankfurt last week and and i didn't know he, he had mixed uh i think it is is it grinding wheel i think that was the one that he mixed actually um so i didn't know that, that he'd mixed that record so Anyway. Oh, can you Audience. answer can you answer this? Do you know if Andy Sneap played on the new Priest album? I know he produced it, but did he play on it? You know, I don't know. I haven't talked, you know, it's funny because we were driving around uh Slovakia <laughs> listening to the new Priest record. You know, me and Andy Martin Jelly 
when we were just over on the Base Warrior Tour, me and Andy Martin-Jelly and our, our the guitar player, Walter, you know, we were like, you know, we're huge freaking Priest fans, you know. So we were uh, just, you know, listening to, you know, everything from Pretty Steel, which is probably, you know, Hellbent for Leather and Pretty Steel are probably my, that's kind of the centerpiece for me, you know, uh, with Priest catalog. And, and up through certainly Screaming for Vengeance, for sure. Um, you know, I know a lot of people love Painkiller. It was kind of a new sound, a new era for them. Um, you know, probably my favorite song off that was, um, or my, yeah, oh God, was it? I played it with KK Downing. Um, the uh, the hammer and, between the hammer and the anvil. That's mm. oh, that's that is. I love that song. You that's know? my so that, favorite that was, on that one. Yeah, that was that was kind of my tune off that. And then of course I love Firepower. Man, I think Firepower is amazing. And um, and the new record. It's great. There's that one song on there. Um, is it Gods in the Sky or something? That was the one. There's As God is My Witness. That's the one I really like. I don't know if that's. It's the one. It's got like this Freddie Mercury thing in the middle of it. And I was just, I was, I was texting him with Steve. <laughs> I go, dude, it's, it's amazing. It's like got like this Freddie Mercury, like this whole thing in the middle of it. So anyway, I was just, you know, nerding out with Andy on stuff. And we were just, you know, talking about, uh, you know, kind of deep diving on Priest. Because as much as he's, you know, plays with Judas Priest and produces Judas Priest, he's, you know, he's kind of an outsider to it as well as a, as a producer, you know, as a producer would be. You, you sort of, that's what you like about producers is they sort of have an outside ear on it, you know. So, um, you know, it's funny with with uh, Richie and Steve, you know, they, they bring this kind of new, young, youthful energy into that, which I think is is pretty cool. So, uh but yeah, was- to answer your question, I don't know. <laughs> he okay. played on it. I assume he did. I mean, I assume he, as far as I know, he was kind of knighted and anointed by Glenn, you know, to be, you know, the, the guy, you know, to, to take his role, you know. So I, I assume he did, but I, I can't answer for sure. Yeah, there, there was. I mean, it's not it's not too important. It takes you know four seconds to look it up. I, it was just uh, we were yeah. talking about it recently, and I just I didn't know. How how do you yep. contrast that with uh, Sinjutsu? The new priest record, I mean. How do I contrast what? Uh, the new priest record with Sunjutsu, the most recent Maiden record. I gotta be honest with you, I'm not familiar with it. I'm really not. I I, I glanced over it on iTunes when it came up, um, and I you know I never did the pre order on it. <laughs> it's usually what I do. I'll like get the <laughs> single, and then I'll kind of pre. So I did the priest. You know, I pre ordered it well like a year ago. And then when it comes out, it you know you get the notification. Hey, this is now in your in your library. Um, I, I good question. I should I should pay attention to it. I mean, honestly, between Bass Warrior, well, really, look, you know, at Nam, I played with like God, I played five things. I did two Kings of Thrash shows. I did the Montrose thing. I played with Diet, and I played with Metal Allegiance. And I mean, yeah. my hard drive up here was. Full, you know, I couldn't listen to anything. It's it's kind. I'm kind of in this mode right now that if I'm not performing it, I'm not listening to it. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I'm really, just. And then we went into Bass Warrior, and of course, I know those songs because you know some Megadeth stuff, a bunch of my own solo stuff. So, and a few covers and things. So that that wasn't too much of a challenge to kind of get you know teed up for that. That was fine. But you know, and then the Overkill thing, you know, is is um, you know that's it's definitely a new a new beast for me, you know? So, um, it's a, it's a fun challenge and, you know, digging into that. So, um, yeah, priest just kind of happened to be on the stereo <laughs> between all of us. So you're right. I'll dig into that. Cause basically I saw the new maiden dates got announced here for America, you know, and I usually try to go coast to go see those guys when they, when they come through town, you know? So, um, thanks for the heads up while I'm in South America, I'll be <laughs> deep diving into the new maiden record. There you well, go. No, well, it's a, the, well, it's the a, reason yeah. I ask about that is because everybody has been singing the praises of the new Priest record. And I, I think Priest has always kind of put out pretty quality albums. Like, I really don't think they have any duds. Like, I think people didn't like Turbo at the time because it was such a, a, a drastic change. But I think in hindsight, mm-hmm. people look back in Turbo and say, hey, that, that's actually a pretty good 80s record. It's a, it's a good rock and roll record. It's poppier, but, hey. you know. It, I, I agree with you. You know, it's I, you know, it's funny and watching them. You know, and even though it's different members and everything now than Glenn and KK and whatnot, but I mean, I'm, I was you know, night when I was watching them, I'm just going, man, these guys have delivered just album after album, and you know, despite you know internal changes that happen over many decades in indie bands, you know, they have really delivered with the records. You know, I mean, for me, probably point of entry was 
a bit of a head scratcher coming off of uh British steel. Cause it wasn't as heavy, you know, but um, I, I like it. I go back and I listen to it now. In fact, because of the covering, remember the original cover was like this sort of like you're driving to Arizona. Like a road. California. Yeah. So when I drive <laughs> literally after like after NAM, I'm trying from California out to, out to Phoenix, I literally listen to point of entry on every drive, like every drive, because it just reminds me of the, the original album cover uh from that and i think i think that was around the time rob moved out here to to phoenix if, if i'm not mistaken so you know it was kind of a you know new new decade for them a new sound and you know then of course that followed up the screaming for vengeance you know the one record it's funny ram, ram it down that was right before turbo right no right after right after oh, right after okay so it still had so it still kind of had some of that electronic stuff in there that turbo mm-hmm. had right so which i which i thought was pretty I like that album. Cutting edge yeah. back in that day, yeah. man, because it wasn't digital. You know, we weren't in digital and Pro Tools. I mean, I guess MIDI was around, so they were involving some of that stuff. But, I, yeah, I, I thought that was pretty pretty forward-thinking. That's funny. Me, Dave, and Chris Poland went down to go see the, them with the Turbo <laughs> in, in L.A. at the sports yeah, arena. Yeah. So um, I, I, I liked it. I thought, that was when KK was wearing sunglasses, you know. Yeah. Like, Dude, that so rad. He wears sunglasses <laughs> at 9 o'clock at night. Like, that's... That's a freaking rock star right there. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, and, and that transition too is like you go from Defenders of the Faith to Turbo, and it's like whoa, whoa, yin and yang. But then ram it down. It's like like it's getting back to to normal. And but Turbo to Painkiller, like that's a perfect transition. You get Turbo, ram it down, Painkiller. Like the trajectory right. is there. And then even from Painkiller to Jugulator, which I stand by, is not only a good album. It's it's an extremely underrated album, and I think most of the hate that it gets. It's because it doesn't have Rob Halford, but Tim Hollins is still a good singer. I do think yeah. they did need to scale the heavy back, and and they did that um, when Halford rejoined the band. I agree. Yeah, it's funny. Those two records that Tim was on, they were kind of like Glenn's solo albums. It sounded like he wrote most of it. I think he wrote all the lyrics, and uh, it hmm. was like it's kind of like the Glenn solo. You know, it's funny. Then you read the books, like KK's book. He was talking about how after uh, Painkiller, he was going to quit the band. But by the time he landed in L.A., Rob had put out the announcement he quit. <laughs> so Rob's OK. He's like, well, I guess I'll stay. So, you know, it, it, and it's funny. I read these memoirs, man. And, dude, we are all from the same band. I mean, it's the drama, the behind the scenes, the, you know, the um, just whatever it is, you know, the, the personalities. And because, you know, you think about it, every ba- every group kind of has the same personality types, right? The drummer, bass player, singer, lead guitar player. You know, there's kind of these same personality dynamics. Um, you know, those personalities choose those instruments, you know, or maybe those instruments choose those personalities. I don't know which one it is, but, but that's just kind of what the, seems like what the the chemical makeup inside of every band is like that. Well, I, I think at the end of the day, people are people. And it's, and, and I think that's why like marriage is so hard just in, in general is because, you know, you, you see someone, you see them, you know, two, three times a week, you're like, Oh, I like this, but then you're not ready for 20, literally 24 seven with that person. And it's just kind of, it's shocking. And it's the same thing with the touring band. It's like, Oh, here's my, you know, here's my friends from when I was a kid and like, Oh yeah, we'll start doing this. Like, okay, now it's a profession. Now money's involved. Okay. Now we don't get a break from each other. And, and I think uh, it, it's, it's a similar story everywhere do you do you like professional wrestling you know it's funny because i so i grew up in minnesota right and i used to watch that wrestling that was out of uh then ktsp channel five out of uh minneapolis and who was who was that that was like the original kind of wrestling i think right so i remember watching that sunday mornings as a kid um and then of course with megadeth you know we uh Goldberg used our song uh, "Crush 'Em" uh, that we, you know, for that we went down and we actually played at the uh, uh, was at the WCW at the time, I guess, yeah. Um, yeah. down at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Yeah, so you know, I got to be and it's funny going around backstage and watching these guys rehearsing their moves together. <laughs> yeah. You know, It'd be like you and me going over riffs before we go on stage. These guys are you know rehearsing you know wrestling moves. That's awesome. <laughs> so, and then, you know, with uh, Chris Jericho, I remember going down to see him. In fact, I got a picture here in the house. I took my son down. That's when, uh, was it Umagi was still alive and all these guys. Uh, and John Cena. John Cena was there. So it was fun hanging with him. I mean, it's kind of before he became the t- TV personality that he is. But I remember, yeah, that night 
Um, Jericho Russell, John Cena, uh, Umagi, if that's his name. Umaga. And, uh, they're super cool, man. You know, they're, they're those guys are all metalheads. They're all rocker dudes, you know, so. Well, they all look like them. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah, yeah they're, all, they're all rockers, you know. But I, I was just going to bring up, uh, there was a, a famous tag team. It was Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. And okay. they had like a, a really famous like internal blow up, and they were they were like this hugely successful tag team. And then just years later, they reflected on it. They only had one fight, and it was like a huge fist fight that kind of ended their their career together. But they said like, considering all the time we spent on the road and all the time we were together, and just we never got a break, we only had one fight. Like that's that's like a pretty crazy thing to think about. And I just like, I reflect on that. I'm like, Oh yeah. Like DJ and I had so many like dumb fights just cause like <laughs> all the, all the time you spend together, you just like uh, certain things just get on your nerves and you just lash yeah. out. Yeah. Hey, you know, like you say, people are people and musicians are musicians. <laughs> well, I'm not so sure musicians are always people. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't think a lot of them are. Yeah. <laughs> We're a strange breed, that's for sure. You know, Dave, I'm curious. Um, you know, we had Lord Armin on the show, and he was at the NAMM show, but we mm -hmm. asked him, you know, where in his opinion, you know, is music going? And he said, straight to hell. <laughs> and he's more, talking more, about modern music. Modern, modern music. music. Like, like that you hear Rock. on the radio, like the mainstream, you know, top 40, because there isn't very much variety anymore in the yeah, look you know these formats of radio they, they pick what works they don't change very much because it's what works that's what's paying the bills you know the, the, the truth of radio is it's advertising interrupted by music you know and, and <laughs> we as listeners we think it's music interrupted by advertising but you know i learned this in the 90s when megadeth was having a lot of success at radio you know you really learn about the demographics who's listening to it what age groups and you know you know, you know, if it's age, say, you know, 18 to 28 or 26, well, they're going to, you know, these, these are like, they, they rent, they don't own yet. You know, you're hearing ads for head shops and, you know, how to like take clean piss tests for Monday at work as your problem <laughs> stoner, you know, like these kind of things, right? You know, you're not hearing anything about like, you know, Those things buy a new work. house, yeah. <laughs> you know, Chevrolet and how to buy a home and mortgages. Right. And, Do you your tax. That's on a different <laughs> format, you know, so, so it's right. all about advertising and, you know, they pick playlists of, you know, they decide, okay, this demographic, they like rock and roll, this demographic likes hip hop, this demographic likes alternative, you know, country, whatever. And, and, you know, then the advertising revenue is according. So, you know, radio is all about, advertising money you know the, the fact that they're they're burdened by playing music is uh you know <laughs> is is, is kind of how it is but you know to your end it's funny when i was in um poland we were shooting these videos for dieth a year back year and a half ago and, and i remember our producer or the video director he said that he goes he goes basically he goes let's face it we basically make music for people to take drugs to and i was like whoa that's harsh he goes well think about it man it's like you know most music is just so people can like get stoned and get high and you know whether it's edm and you're you know into you know molly and ecstasy or, or, you're, or you're like a metalhead and you're a smoking weed or you know whatever and i was like well i guess your country maybe you're drinking beers you know so it's like i guess i guess maybe you have a point you know so um maybe that plays to what your your comment right there right well, you know, you, you you bring up something that I actually did want to talk about. Do you do you like movies? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, I I'm like I watch a movie once, I'm done. Like I buy an album, I'll listen to it till it falls apart. But with movies, I'll watch it once and I'm done. I'm not like a collector. I don't you know have sure. movies. Like, I, and now pretty much everything, I just watch it. Either I look, I either catch up on airplanes, uh, or I or I watch Netflix. You know, that's my kind of my jam. Well, ha have you seen uh, Transformers? Not the one from the 80s, the, the one from like 2007. No, I have not. Okay, because I, I was thinking about this the other day. So if you go, I, it's not a movie you should watch, but if <laughs> if it's ever around and you're watching it, just look for all the product placement in it. Because that was okay. something, like that was one of the first times I noticed that like every car is a GMC and like every shot someone either sure. ha has like an HP or like an Apple and there's a whole shot of it. And then just like, when I got to the end of it, I was just like, well, like, it's funny, you know, I have, I have friends who work at Apple and they have like a whole artist relations department in Hollywood specifically for placement of their products in movies, you know? And, 
Um, you know, when I worked for PB, when I ran artist relations for them um, during the 2000s, I, I got some experience with this because companies out of L.A. started calling. Hey, can we get some guitars? Can we get this? Uh, whether it was to put things on the prices right, right, which, you know, is huge, you know, eyeballs, morning TV, right? That's big time eyeballs on your products. And then also there were movie companies you know, say, you know, look at like Freaky Friday, right? With uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and uh, Lindsay Lohan. And uh, what's her name? The young actress chick there. You know, Lindsay Lohan. Uh, yeah, yeah, Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, you know, that was all like what Gibson or some Fender stuff in there, you know? So I, I realized, I just, so I had the same with you. It's like you look at movies like, ah, clearly Ford paid big money to have product placement, plus they had to put the products in there, you know? Or, you know, you see like, you know, Tom Cruise with the Ray Bands. I mean, that was a huge check i'm sure you know it wasn't just a pair of ray-bans like that cost them a lot of money for that you know i mean that's an iconic moment right we all like that just made ray-bans awesome because tom cruise <laughs> wore them in risky business or whatever that was you know so. and top gun he did it in both of them it's top gun okay oh, yeah. yeah 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 that's his endorsement this is like i got jackson guitars here he's a ray-ban guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and i was just thinking like what did i just watch a commercial or a movie and, and so it just, it just makes me wonder, like, why is this stuff all here? And it's because it works. Well, and it's, it's also how movies are paid for, you know, when, when there's, you know, just like with records, right. You get a good album, someone has to pay for it. You know, today people can do crowdfunding. Um, you know, I often pay for my own records and then license them, you know, and stuff like this. Um, but you know, if you're in the movie business, you know, there's this great show called, Oh gosh, what is it? It, it? It's it's all these great movies like Home Alone and Elf and all these things. These movies that almost didn't get made, you know, mm-hmm. because you know for whatever reason some production hold up or they ran out of money or whatever, you know. And or fi- you know finally the studio green lights it and they do all these rewrites and they you know they go through all these processes with these, these things. But it's a big part of how movies actually get funded. You know, is 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 getting all this sponsorship money and it doesn't look like sponsorship, but. It is, you know, it's called product placement, just like you said, you know, but that's a big part of how, how films often get, get paid for and under the underwriting for the, for the financing of it. But, but yeah, but the greater point that I was getting at, and yes, everything that you said, it, it, it makes sense there. I, cause I don't really like movies. I like watching people talk about movies and there's a, a YouTube channel that I like, and it's these like two guys in Milwaukee and then they just like, it's called red letter media and they okay. had an they had an episode on Jack and Jill, the Adam Sandler movie, which it did not have oh any, any appeal to me <laughs> whatsoever, but yeah. hearing them talking about it and like, like every shot, like there wasn't just like Pepto-Bismol, like Adam Sandler would say, oh, I need a Pepto-Bismol. And then there would be like it clearly in the frame. And then they went over the budget of the movie was like $80 million. Like how, how did this movie cost $80 million? <laughs> But people well, they all are needed Pepto Bismol. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I do. That. <laughs> <laughs> but but that that advertising works. Like if 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 you didn't see it everywhere, like going back to Aben Eubanks, we were talking about yeah. like well, I don't know, some song came up, and then he's like, oh yeah, you hear a song once, and you're like, oh, the song sucks, but then you hear it 150 times, like you know what, I kind of like this song now, and, and it's the same thing. Like, uh, do you like The Simpsons? Uh, I, I do. I do. I remember when that all, you know, it's funny. I remember when that all came out, that was right around the time Nick Menza was getting into Megadeth mm. and, um, yeah. and you know, because Fox had just started that network. So there was like married with children and the Simpsons, you know, all these really kind Tracy, of abrasive, Tracy, cutting Alden edge, sort of white Street. trash, <laughs> and, you know, uh, <laughs> TV was popular, you know? And, uh, so, um, yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I watch it. I, I'm not, I can't say I'm a fan, but I, I right. watch it. Yeah. Well, the, well, there was an episode where, where Homer was driving by billboards and there was like one for like barbecue sauce. I can't remember the other one. The last one was clown college, but then you see all the products around him at his workstation. Like he has like the one food and the barbecue sauce. And then just all he can think about is clown college. So you just see this stuff over and over. Like don't, I wanted a Jackson when I was in high school because I, that's, that was the thing that was synonymous with Megadeth to me is mm-hmm. just like, Oh, a Jackson. Like, and, and eventually like, that was my goal in life. Like I'm going to have a Jackson and then, and I got it. But if I didn't see it everywhere and then like that's plastered on albums too, like, you know, so-and-so plays this and whatever. Yeah. And, and then, and that's, and that's kind of perverted. I would say modern music. 
Like I, I don't think that it, it necessarily sells. I just think what they do, they figured out the earworm formula. They just play it over and over. And then, and that's, what's kind of turned, uh, regular people into like quote unquote influencers. Cause influencers, they're not marketers. Like they're not like, cause you were talking about like the demographics, like, oh, these people like, oh, you know, they need their piss test, you know, for whatever they're. <laughs> That's what marketing is like. Marketing is like, okay, we need to get this demographic. Okay. But if we do it this way, we'll alienate this one. Like we need to cast a wide net where now an influencer is just someone that exists. And then people just buy their stuff because they have it. So like, I, I think marketing has, is it, it's come a long way instead of trying to convince people to, to buy things, they just put it in front of people and then just it, it, it burrows into their brain. Like, you know, those old smoking commercials were like the this four out of five doctors agree that Campbell cigarettes are like whatever. And then now they don't like do those anymore, but everyone's smoking in like a TV show or a movie. And then that's where most people pick up that habit. You just put it in front of people. And I think that's, what's happened to modern music is they're not trying to market it. Cause it's, there's no MTV. Like you're going to go on MTV and you're going to let's, Oh, let's watch headbangers ball and find the new like metal thing. Now they just, it's just all over Facebook, all over YouTube. And then now that's all people know, because we, we've talked about this a lot on this show is that that first broadcast of MTV, like the very first one, it had two Iron Maiden songs on the first broadcast. So like you'd be watching very MTV. first broadcast at two Iron Maiden songs. I did not know that. Yeah. And yeah. like, I think uh 35 was Wrathchild, but it's like in in the teens like 13 to 16 was iron maiden okay. so like you'd be watching mtv you see like blondie and rod stewart and phil collins and then iron maiden <laughs> so that was that was the variety back then like you would get like a bunch of different things it's like let's see what resonates with what and then that's where shows like headbangers ball or you know yo raps or whatever came out now it's just like it's the one thing like why, why is, why is David Ellison not hosting the Grammys? Like, that's what I'm wondering. I'm not funny enough. <laughs> no, uh, I thought Trevor Noah did a great job on the Grammys. I love that guy. I thought I, that was, I thought he did, he did. And of course, listen, those are all joke writers, right? I have comedian friends of mine who write jokes for stuff like that, you know, for these roasts and the, you know, for those kind of things, you know, so they, 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 they find, you know, a lot of that stuff is not ad lib that much at all. It's pretty scripted, you know, but uh, exactly. But you're right. I should host, the, I should host that for the Grammys. You should. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. You, well, you're, well, you no, know, the well, reason not I with that attitude. Ice Cube, Ice, you know, look, the Grammys are on CBS. And remember, I think it was Ice Cube. He was doing it. He was, he was on the most popular CBS uh, show there for a few years. And that's why they had him host it, right? Because, you know, the Grammy, the Grammy TV show is just a TV show. Right. Yeah. And it's like most of the Grammys are given out in the afternoon, <clears throat> like about 70 of them. And then they only pick about 12 of them to give out on TV because that's, you know, those are the big categories with the big pop stars. And, you know, what's going to get people to watch the game or, you know, you know, it's like a football game or something. Right? Yeah. So it's like, what are the what are the artists that are going to get people to tune in and watch the Grammys? Right. For the performances. So. Same deal. Well, listen, gentlemen, I got to get jumping. I got to get back to work here. So um, maybe wrap up with one question or something. Well, why don't you just tell us uh, what you're working on and where everyone could find you and just uh, generally what you're up to now. Yeah, I mean, look, davidallison.com is kind of the hub. Um, Facebook, same thing, David Allison, you know. Um, And, uh, yeah, I mean, look, coming up here, I got they'll spend a month in uh, South America with uh, Overkill, and then we've got – Kings of Thrash, uh, Summer of Thrash Tour. We just announced American Tour for uh, July. I'm sorry, for June. I'm going to see you in Long Beach in June. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's going to so be great. I'll be there. Yeah. 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 Sorry yeah. to. Yeah, the gas lamp there. Yep. So that's at the end of um, the end of uh, June. And then Kings of Thrash is also going to uh, back to Australia. We're going to do the Peace Cells album in its entirety, bringing Chris Poland with us. So that'll be super cool. And a um, whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, you know, ramp it up after that. So yeah, suddenly what about the, what about the coffee? Uh, you know, it's, it's part, you know, we talked about it before we got on here right. about, at, at the NAM show, we did the Allison coffee, mm-hmm. group, which was, you know, kind of all things Allison. It was yes. 
you know, that we had everything. That was the highlight of NAM. <laughs> yeah, really, really, really fun. It's, uh, you know, NAM have been very gracious to us. And of course, they're trying to get a lot of everybody back to NAM after COVID and everything. So I feel like, I kind of feel like we're part of the new NAM, you know, nice. and, you know, trying out some new concepts and new things. And, uh, you know, they put kind of all the, you know, all the nice people around the fringe when you get in around the outside. And then as you got into the creamy center, there's Ellison <laughs> coffee, you know, <laughs> so rocking out old school, like, like the old man days, you know, so it was, it was very cool. So we, we plan to be back next year and expanding on it and bringing in some other partners. Excellent. So it's the jam. Yep. No, oh, wonderful. And thank you so much for your time, Mr. Ellison. Really appreciate it. Uh, is there a, a song we can play of yours during our break? Uh, sure. I mean, look, why don't you play, um, look, you know, look, going out, if you want to play, uh, look, if you want to play an Ellison song, I always like Simple Truth, I think is a cool song. Um, if you want to play something from Ellison Soto, uh, you could always play Vacation in the Underworld. That's kind of a cool song. So maybe that, maybe that one's just as good. So I, I don't know, have a pick. All right. Well, we'll surprise you. There you go. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much. Hey, thank you. Take care and stay safe out there, my friend. Thanks, guys. See ya. Bye. Bye.